I've been getting some extremely valid criticism from Ten Choose Three and Verity Seeker for my use of the diagonalization argument in my initial Does Counting Exist video, so I thought it would be wise to do a follow-up. I keep forgetting something about the diagonalization argument in particular that had me coming up with the misconception that it always works with any set that has an infinite amount of numbers with infinite amount of digits. But then I remembered that if you try it on the set of rational numbers between 0 and 1, the number you get on the diagonal won't be in the set of course, but it also won't be a rational number, so it's not supposed to be in the list anyway. That being said, I understand that the set I constructed in the video that started out with the terms 0 .0, 0 .1, 0 .2, etc. seem to be used a bit naively, but I really did put more thought into it than is first apparent. Although this set, once flipped over the decimal point, looked like the natural numbers and was described as the way I normally count after it was flipped, I must insist in the slickest way possible that it was in actuality an unusual shuffling of an unknown subset of the real numbers, where the first ten to the trillionth power or so digits listed were indeed a reflection of the natural numbers, but the later terms were completely random except that a zero always happened to be on the diagonal drawn. And since I never count to 10 to the trillionth power, who's to say I don't really count in such a manner? Anyway, I wasn't really trying to prove that natural numbers are uncountable or anything of the sort. The goal of the video was to weakly imply that the use of the diagonalization argument in an illegitimate manner can take away the possibility that anything can be counted. My argument in the video definitely wasn't conclusive by any means in this regard, but it did show that if you classify whole numbers as any number without digits to the right of the decimal point, then the whole numbers are uncountable because there can be whole numbers that have infinite digits and such a set would have the same cardinality as the reals. I wanted to call the whole numbers with infinite digits transcendental whole numbers, but then I found out what transcendental means and I felt it doesn't really apply. I suppose infinite digit whole numbers can be called transfinite numbers since no one seems to know what that means enough to create a Wikipedia entry more than a few paragraphs. No doubt a lot of these numbers can be represented as diverging infinite series. I have yet to see any evidence whatsoever that the diagonalization argument is false, but I've always felt uneasy about using it. I simply don't trust it enough to classify it as an irrefutable proof. It clearly works with a finite set of numbers that all have finite digits, but I think someone has to take a bit of risky logical jumping to extrapolate that argument so that it includes an infinite set of numbers that all have infinite digits. In my opinion, highly unpredictable stuff happens to digits that are infinitely far away from a decimal point. Who knows what happens way out there? The position of a digit within a number may not even matter once a number gets to that many digits. The digits might all get squeezed together or spread apart, making a diagonal among a group of such numbers pointless to draw. One might be led to think that I don't believe real numbers have a higher cardinality than the natural numbers. I would have to say this is untrue. Seriously, I have nothing against the result of the diagonalization argument since I intuitively think that the real number set is far larger than the integer set. I'm just uneasy about this particular means of arriving at that conclusion. Although most mathematicians don't trust intuition since it might be misleading, I have to put at least some stock in it. Since mathematics is based on intuitive principles, is it wrong if it gets counterintuitive results? What if you erase all known mathematical axioms 
and start over from scratch by finding every counterintuitive mathematical result and using its negation as an axiom. How would mathematics change if we did that? Heck, if a set can be twice as big as itself with these kinds of numbers, I don't see what rules you throw away and what ones you keep. Is the idea that you can't count to infinity, but you can count once you get there? No wonder I think human logic is a flawed representation of truth, and I've fallen into surrealism and G-rated shock value. I suppose I could have tried flipping the rational numbers between 0 and 1 around the decimal point, getting some random whole number with infinite digits along the diagonal, and claiming this number is still in the set because it's a form of infinity like a great deal of other numbers in the set, but that would be even more sloppy than my usual style. It's like I had the sloppy idea that imaginary numbers aren't imaginary. They're just something that's not a positive number and not a negative number. And then I got the idea about the possibility of degrees of positivity. Like if a number is not completely positive or completely negative, how close is it to one description or the other? But I'm too lazy and too sloppy to figure all that stuff out. I'm sure someone else can do the research on that if they want. You see, I didn't major in math to contribute to it. I only majored in math to sound smart at parties. And then I forgot I never go to parties. Oops. <laughs>